Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Rock Bottom Airsoft. It's good to see you again. As always, if it's your first time here, and it's good to see you, I'm glad you stopped by. Today's video, we're doing one of my follow-up reviews on the Saima CM032A, or a replica of the Socom 16. Uh, if you may recall, I did an earlier video where we did an overview of it and a bit of a review looking at what the replica itself looks like. Since then, I have managed to get out to the field and use the replica in the field. I've used the replica before, if I'm honest, but I thought I'd show you some gameplay footage of it in the field so you get a feel for the fact that it has been used and it is proven. Now, the video that I did most recently, one of my gameplay videos on the Wednesday, that was exclusively featuring the Saima CM032A. I'm going to put a link to that video in the description if you haven't watched it already, and then you can see a full gameplay featuring the replica. In this video, what we'll do is we'll just do a quick overview and my recommendation on it and what I think of it. And also, I'll show you a little bit of extra gameplay footage, all in a, in a montage, if you like, um, which you, you can see right now. Um, I'll put those videos in this video, um, and then I will come back to you. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that uh, gameplay footage that I had there of the CM032A or the Socom 16 replica in action. Uh, I was certainly impressed with it. Before I go into the details of the Socom 16 and we, we go through my final verdict on it, what I wanted to say is if you are enjoying my videos and you are enjoying my series of videos then, then please do subscribe to the channel that way you'll not miss out on any of my uploads I do tend to upload a gameplay video midweek if I've managed to get out to the field the prior weekend and I'll also be doing a video every weekend just like this one where we cover all aspects of, of our great hobby airsoft uh, we'll look at unboxings we'll look at reviews of kit gear replicas a bit of tech work in there as well so pretty much try and cover all bases all from a, a more affordable point of view so if you do enjoy it then pop a like on this video and as always if you have any comments for me or if you've got any questions for me then do drop a comment below i'll always get back to you it might not be straight away but i'll get back to you as quick as i certainly can okay so with that out of the way moving on here we have the uh Saima CM032A. Uh, I've taken the scope off that was on during gameplay and that was also on during the review that we did. Uh, that's primarily because this is fresh out of the case, back from the game it was in. Um, and I tend to take the scope off while it's in the case just for, for better fitment of my replicas and my gear in there. Still got the tag on there though, two tags now um, for the chrono. So that first of all brings me on to Chrono. When I chronoed this on site, it was reasonably consistent on a 0.25 gram BB. 
I was getting between 297 feet per second uh, all the way up to about 306 feet per second. That was on a, a 0.25 gram BB, so certainly site legal. Now I have heard rumors that some of the Simer replicas, dependent on the supplier that you buy it from, will arrive shooting hot, because uh, they put a heavier spring in. And I have heard rumors of some of these shooting well up to 400 feet per second, uh, which for a fully auto capable replica, is obviously not gonna meet field requirements in the UK. Uh, depending on where you are in the world, will depend on your field requirements for, for joule limits, uh, feet per second limits, and the power that your replica can output. Um, in the case of the UK, where I'm based, then this would certainly be too hot if it was 400 feet per second and still fully auto capable. Now, this particular one of mine, uh, this one is not over field limits. It arrived shooting at that uh, level of power, which around 300 between 297 and 306 feet per second on a, on a 0.25 gram BB, which puts it right on the limit for UK legal. Um, yeah, you know, that's uh, that's great for me. Uh, that's how it arrived. That's how my supplier delivered the replica for me. So just double check if you are gonna buy one that it has been set up to run on UK legal limits for the field. Otherwise, you could go down the DMR route and remove the uh, fully auto capable on this replica, now depending on your field, there is a small Allen grub screw on the selector switch, which you can remove that and pretty much lock it to semi, uh, which would put it as a DMR spec. Uh, so even if it was shooting over the 350, then you'd be okay. So with that in mind, I mean, it's not massively consistent, but it's, it's, it's relatively consistent. It never deviated between 297 and 306 feet per second and that that was over around about 10 to 15 shots through the chrono uh, in game as you can probably see from the videos i was shooting at quite some ranges at the enemy team and the range on this always surprises me uh, it's a superb range on it and it's it's reasonably accurate as well i could hit man-sized targets with this on semi I never needed to go into full auto on this replica. I never have gone on full auto with this particular replica. It, it's, it's more than accurate enough for semi-auto shots at considerable distances, as you can see in the video. It's well-made and sturdy. It's never given me any issues on the field, as you can probably see in the video. The metal construction is nice. Everything about the replica is, is pretty good quality. Um, and for a sub, 200 british pounds replica then then that's pretty good as i say you can get one of these round about the 189 99 mark sometimes you'll find them cheaper sometimes slightly more but they're usually a sub 200 pound replica uh, battery fitment is an absolute breeze as we mentioned in the original review because you've got the entire stock here to fit a battery in it comes with mini tamiya connectors as standard uh, i've changed mine over to dean's it does not have a MOSFET, which is a drawback, and it is a very heavy replica. Uh, there is a lot of weight to it. So be, be forewarned that it is going to tire you out running around with this all day, because it does weigh a bit more than your average AR-based replica. But with the gameplay in mind, the fact that I've never had any issues with it, the quality that, that it seems to have, um, and that it looks really good and it's certainly different on the field i was the only person that day with the socom 16. in fact at my regular field at tasball airsoft i have yet to see somebody else running a socom 16. i've seen other people running m14s uh, but not a socom 16 so it's, they are uh, still a little bit more rare to see on the field and it performs uh, so for the money you pay i would definitely recommend it as I always stipulate with my videos, I can only give you recommendations based on my experience with my particular replica. I bought this replica myself, as I do with all my replicas. I've had it for some time. It's never given me any trouble, and I really like it. So I would certainly recommend the Simer CM032A, or the Socom 16 replica by Simer, because it has proved itself with me, and it certainly shoots well. A very nice replica. Okay, so, so that's my follow-up review of the Simer Socom 16. 
I think we've clarified there that I like it and that I'd certainly recommend it. So if you are in the market for something a bit different, that, that gets my seal of approval anyway. Uh, before I end this video, I must confess to you that I, I nearly didn't do the video on that this weekend, uh, primarily because uh, I've recently come into ownership of a Tokyo Marui LCP pistol. Now I haven't taken it out of the box yet, it's still brand new. Um, I was itching to take it out of the box, I'm quite excited about having a look at it as I get with all my new Airsoft replicas. Um, but I've held back because I want to do an unboxing on it. So you can probably guess what the video next weekend will be. Next weekend we'll be having a look at the Tokyo Marui LCP compact non-blowback gas pistol. I can't wait to have a look at it, I can't wait to show you. It's new out, it looks pretty cool from what I've seen. Um, so I'll have to hold on to myself not to open that box before then. Uh, but until we do that video, as I mentioned earlier, if you like this video, then please drop a like on it. If you like my series of videos, then please do subscribe, and then you don't miss any of my uploads, including the Tokyo Marui LCP unboxing that I'm going to be doing. And overall, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.